The next thing that we're going to do back in the Unity Editor is we are going to set up our columns, which are going to be our obstacles for our bird. So I'm going to start in the sprites folder by grabbing the column sprite, dragging it in. This is going to land it at origin, and I'm going to set its sorting layer to mid-ground, so it's behind the ground and in front of the background, and let's pull it down. We're going to position it at negative four, and we are going to add, so I'm positioning it at negative four on the Y. I just did that by typing it in. We're going to add a component, which is going to be physics 2D box collider 2D. And I'm going to set the size on the X to one. And again, I'm just typing that in and you can see that being updated here. Switch to the pan tool so we can get a good view of it. So it's not perfect, but it's generally okay. You can wiggle it around to get it to, I'm not going to worry about those little edges. Let's just get it kind of generally on the body of the column. Okay. So once we've got that in place, I'm going to right click, duplicate, and rotate it. So I'm going to go to the Z axis rotation in the transform component, and I'm going to type 180. And then I'm going to set the Y position to, let's try, um, Let's try eight and we may need to mess around with this a little bit, but I think that should be good for now. And then we are going to create a holder object for both of these. So I'm going to right click, create an empty object. I'm going to name this object columns and I'm going to make sure it's at zero. And then I'm going to drag both of the column sprite objects onto it. So now we have this holder object for the top and bottom of the columns, and we're going to add a trigger collider to it, which is going to be right here. So we can check to see if the player has made it through and scored a point. So with the columns game object, the parent selected, we're going to choose add component, physics 2D, box collider 2D, and we're going to make that a trigger collider. Now it's positioned it right here. We are going to use the Y offset to move it up. So it's between these two. Drag the X to put it right on the far side. And then the Y size to just make sure that it covers the gap there. And let's just move this over a little bit to about here so that we can test. These are actually going to be positioned by a script, but for now, for testing, we're just going to move it over there to positive five on the X. Okay. So this is going to need a couple additional components. It's going to need a rigid body 2D, right? Because it's going to be moving. So let's add that. We're going to choose add component, physics 2D, rigid body 2D. And this is also going to be body type kinematic, right? It's only going to be moved via script. And so we are going to add a script to this, which is going to check to see if it has to see if the player has collided with our trigger and scored a point. So let's add component. And this script is going to be called column. I'm going to choose new script, hit create an add and double click it to open it in mono develop. And now this script is going to need to tell the game control that a point has been scored. So before we write the content of this script, now that we've created it and added it, let's jump over to the game control for a moment. And we're going to add a new public function. Let's add it above bird died. And this is going to be public void bird scored. This is going to be called whenever the bird scores a point and it's going to be called from our column script. So in order to score a point, we need to have some concept of a score. So let's add 
a private int score and initialize that to zero. And then in bird scored, we don't want to allow the player to score if the game is over. So first we're going to check if game over, what we're going to do is we're going to return, meaning we're going to exit the function without doing anything else. So we're going to say, if the game is over, return, don't try to score a point. However, if that's not true, we're going to move on to the next line here where we say score plus plus. And that's the same as saying score equals score plus one. It's just a short way of writing it. Now, the next thing that we want to do is display the score using our score text object that we made. So we need to add the UI namespace to be able to do that. So we're going to scroll over to the top of the script and we're going to use, we're going to add using unity engine dot UI. That allows us to declare a new public text variable called score text. We're going to drag that in the inspector when we return to the editor, but first in bird scored, let's display the score. So with score text, we're going to say score text dot text, the, the text in the text field that we're going to display equals score plus score our int dot to string. Okay, so now when the player collides with the column, we're going to have it call this bird scored function, which is going to check if the game is over and do nothing or add one to the score and display it in the score text. So let's return to our column now. And in column, we can actually get rid of start and update because we're not going to use them. All we're going to use is a private void on collision enter 2D. And we're going to give this the parameter of the type collider 2D called other. We're going to use this so that we can check what has collided with us. So in on, I'm sorry, and this is not on trigger on collision enter 2D, this is on trigger enter 2D. And that's a crucial difference, which would not work if I did it the other way, because we already set the collider on our columns game object to have the is trigger property be set to true. So we want to check if we've passed through a trigger not collided with a solid object. Okay, so in here we're going to check if other dot get component bird does not equal null, meaning whatever passes through the trigger, we're going to check to see if it's a bird, if it has a bird component attached to it. If it does have a bird component, then we're going to call game control dot instance dot bird scored. And that is all we need for this script. It's super simple. Let's save it, return to game control and hit control S there to make sure it's saved and return to the unity editor. Now, since we've added a new public variable to game control, we need to drag that in our score text. Let's expand the canvas, grab score text, drag and drop. And now we should be able to test. Let's play. <laughs> and as we can see, our column is receding forever <laughs> into the distance because it's not moving. And that is because we forgot to add to the column a scrolling object component. So let's click add component, type scrolling object. That would be the most frustrating game ever, huh? I'm moving, but the column is moving with me. Okay, now, there we go. Now it moves in sync with the background and we can see we get through and our score is now one instead of zero and we restart and our score backs, goes back to the zero. So all is well so far. The last thing that we're gonna wanna do 
is make a prefab out of these columns because we're gonna to wanna to be able to spawn these via script. We're gonna need a prefab and let's put our column and our repeating background into our scripts folder and let's create a folder called prefabs in the project and drag our columns from the hierarchy to the prefabs folder. That's created a prefab asset for us and we can delete the columns from the scene because we're gonna be spawning those in via script, which we are going to do in our next section, which will be our last script, our column looper or our column object pool. Okay, let's pause for a second and let me check the chat and then we will continue.